video this is my take on the year so far like January and February felt pretty long and then March has just swooshed by I feel like I got nothing done this month honestly it's just like gone by so quickly let me know how you feel about the months right now but that's just my take on the year thus far we are going into quarter two of 2024 I'm sorry it just doesn't it doesn't feel real anyway at the start of a new month you guys know that means I do a monthly reset video where basically I share goals that I set for the previous month, if I achieved them, how I did on them, setting new goals for a new month, doing a reflection on the previous month. I share some like tidying up things or like there's always a segment in the middle that kind of changes. It could be cleaning. Um, I actually haven't decided what I want it to be in this reset yet. Then I also share my content corner, which is the movies, TV shows, and books I have read and watched in the previous month. You're gonna to wanna to stay around if you're a reader because I've read some really good books this past month and so I'm excited to share them with you. I totally forgot to put on a lipstick. Let me do that real quick because my lighting is already like going away and not being the best because I'm filming so late so I need a, a little something. All right, that's a little better. <laughs> okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is reflect on March. So I'm using my daily planner here. Um, this is what I use to kind of reset for my months because there's a monthly goals page and a monthly reflection page for six months. So these planners are six months long um, and they have like your normal monthly spreads where you can like plan out your plan out your month how you want. And then the rest of the planner is daily planning pages. So it's a perfect planner if like you're needing something that's super simple, you just wanna have a few go-to things to plan your month and you really just need like one page for your day and you're good to go. You don't want a planner with a ton of fluff. It has a lot in it, but it's like everything you need and nothing you don't. So I'm gonna put up the monthly reflection and goals pages on the screen, but let's go think about March. Like I said, it was kind of a blur, um, but I did have some really sweet moments, these core memories as I call them here that I wanted to touch on. My month started with my um, book retreat, my girls trip with the book retreat, which was so ethereal is like the word to describe it. It was so gorgeous. We were in South Carolina on the ocean. All we did all week was just read and hang out and laugh and I vlogged it. So if you guys want a very like good vibes, spring break or summer kind of <laughs> inspo at the beach, um, definitely go check out this vlog. Also, if you're a reader, you'll love it as well. And it can help you plan your own beach um, book retreat or just a book retreat in general. So go check it out. But yeah, that was at the beginning of the month. So a really strong start to the month. And then the rest of my month just considered of work, which honestly, I feel like was just the day to day. There was nothing huge um, happening there. And then weekends, seeing friends, hanging out with friends, St. Patty's Day, things like that. And then also uh, my mom was able to come to Nashville real quick and we did Cheekwood Gardens and we saw the tulips for spring and it was absolutely gorgeous. I love those photos, it was beautiful. So those are a few of my favorite core memories. I am tomorrow or sometime when I upload this, um, flying to North Carolina to be with my family for Easter. So I'm filming this obviously before Easter, um, but Easter still is this month, which is crazy, but I'm excited to celebrate my mom's birthday and Easter with my family there. So very exciting trips. I have one trip in April, a trip in May. I have flown every month this year, at least once, some months twice, which is actually crazy. I have never traveled this much before. I don't know what's happening, just like opportunities keep popping up that are not super expensive. I have a place to stay or, you know, flights are covered or things like, it's just popped up where I can fly on these little like weekend trips throughout the year so far. And it's just been so nice. I'm excited to, um, go back to New York in April, but we'll get to that. This month's wins, 
I had a hard time thinking of wins because a lot of times I think of these career wise and like I said just with my work there wasn't a lot of movement forward in a sense you could see however I wrote like my win was making moves like that others couldn't see I feel like I've been working on stuff behind the scenes some launches that are going to come into fruition in April but that just like I feel like this month I was kind of hard on myself work wise I'm like you're not growing enough or you don't have as many views as you should. You need to have a launch for Dream Daily, like you're already behind for the year. I've just kind of been down on myself and you know, I'm trying to forgive myself and be like, you did, you're good. Um, But overall, I just feel like that's, it was hard to come up with a win, honestly. So if you're having trouble coming up with a win some months, I understand. To improve next month more Dream Daily growth, I think that will happen because there's some upcoming launches that I'm really excited for. I'll talk about that in my goals. But then my favorite part of the monthly reflection is rating yourself one to five in these areas of your life to see like how your life is balancing out. So for work, I give myself a three out of five. I was kind of just head down working on stuff, but nothing was crazy. Nothing was bad. It was just normal. This month overall was just like a very average month. Obviously I had some amazing moments like those core memories, but in the day to day, it was just very average. Like I can't, nothing is sticking out. <laughs> Personal, I gave myself a four. Wellness, I gave myself a four. I was really good at having a consistent workout routine. I worked out, I think usually like four times a week-ish. Um, and so I was really proud of that. Social, I gave myself a four. I was pretty social every weekend. Finances, a three, just pretty average, and hobbies, a three. Um, this, I wanted to play more golf and pickleball this month. And like I said, I cannot be, believe the month is over. It's just like flown by. I know I'm probably being annoying, keep saying this, but it just feels like it slipped through my fingers and I didn't get to do or achieve as much as I wanted to, but it's okay. You know, that's why we have next month. All right, so now we're gonna talk goals. Um, so let me pull up my goals from last month. My big goals I had for March were to finish my taxes, which I did. Well, I submitted everything to my accountant. I haven't, we haven't filed with the IRS. That's hopefully going to happen in the next few weeks. <laughs> but I have given everything that I can to my accountant, which is what's the most work. So I'm happy to have gotten that out of the way. Trigger warning with taxes, I know. My second goal was to create a dream daily Instagram and TikTok game plan, which I really didn't do. I definitely like had more content. I did a little content shoot. I felt better about my posting schedule on Instagram this past month, but I feel like then TikTok slides away. It's so hard when you're running multiple accounts to keep them all afloat, but um, I'm gonna give myself a no because I really didn't create a game plan, but that's gonna change with these upcoming launches. I'm gonna have to have a game plan. Um, and my third goal was something that didn't really happen with you guys. It was a side hustle thing that I was doing. That side hustle fell through for now, which is sad to say. Um, I was doing branding work for a ministry here in Nashville area, um, and they had to put that project on pause for now. So I was a little bummed about that, but it frees up some of my time. So, so yeah, that did not happen. Mini goals, take vitamins and supplements every day. Did a really good job with this. You guys know I love my ritual. I love my little supplements and things. Um, finish House of Flame and Shadow. I did it. We're gonna get into my review in the content corner with my book roundup. I'm so excited to talk about House of Flame and Shadow. Go to Pilates three times a week. I did, like I said, some weeks I did like um, Pilates three times a week and a hot yoga class or a cycling ride. Like I really switched it up and added a lot to my workout routine. So I was really, really happy about that. Okay, so now let's talk about my goals for April. And to be honest, I feel like I have a lot on my plate that's like little moving parts that are a part of these big goals. I feel like April's also gonna be very busy for me because of the Dream Daily launches. I'm doing a little friend, quick New York trip. I'm gonna go home to my house in East Tennessee to see, be with family. So I didn't wanna overwhelm myself, so we're keeping it pretty simple with just like the must do's. This is what I have to do this month. Those are my goals. My first big goal for April is doing two Dream Daily launches which like I said, this, these are big tasks. Okay. And one is a pre-order. I'll give you guys a hint. One is going to be for a pre-order for something you guys have been asking for for years. And two is an accessory that goes with a product I already have. So I'm very excited for these. If all goes well, they should both be live by the end of April. And then we're going to have more launches either end of May or beginning of June. So things are about to kick into high gear with Dream Daily. If you don't know, that's my stationary brand. And I'm very nervous. I really want them to go well. Um, and so I know I'm going to be pouring a lot of time into these launches. 
At the end of the month, I'm doing a little spring event with a local coffee shop. So we're doing a little dream daily spring reset event at Prickly Pear Coffee. Follow my Instagram and the dream daily Instagram if you're in the Nashville area. Um, it's going to be like the last weekend in April and I'm really excited for that. So I want to, you know, check off that that event gets done and goes well. And then my third goal is more of a fun personal goal and that is to plan my family's fall trip. We're trying to do a big trip that we've never done before in the fall and I was tasked with planning it, which is fine. I love doing this kind of stuff. Um, and so I want to like get moving on that make sure we can get that booked out soon. And then I just have one mini goal because again, I knew I had these bigger tasks that I needed to get done. I didn't want to overwhelm myself with a bunch of mini goals. And so I just want to try to post more on TikTok. I was seeing some significant growth in the past few weeks before I fell off. So um, post more on my personal and on Dream Daily's TikTok, like four times a week would be ideal. For projects like the launch has just so many tiny due dates that I'm not going to go into detail on that because there's just so many moving parts to a launch um, but habits is definitely like filming and editing TikTok just like doing a little bit every day so I don't get overwhelmed with like I have so much footage to edit or I need to have a whole filming day of short form content just taking a little bit here and there is my goal okay and that is my goal setting and my reflection for from March and going into April I love it when you guys comment below a goal that you have for the month so if you're watching this far let me know down below what's a goal you're sitting for April and let me know if you achieved the goal you commented on my March reset so go to that reset video see what you commented come back let me know if you achieved it and let me know a goal you have now for April all right we're gonna move on to the next portion of this video which at this very moment I don't know what it is but I'm gonna figure it out and we're gonna you'll know right now you guys know I love changing up kind of what's in the middle of these resets not doing the exact same thing every month so I need to pack for my upcoming beach trip for Easter and so I thought I would show you guys my packing routine. I don't think I've done a pack with me video since my Europe trip last year but you guys really like that video. It's actually when I got this suitcase and because I've been traveling so much this year I feel like I kind of got my packing down to a science and it really doesn't take me very long so I thought I would show you guys how I do that. Um, I am going to be using this checked bag. This is from base also I don't have it on my clean bed. I put a blanket down because it has been in the airport. This is their like um smallest checked bag i also have their carry-on i have their weekender bag i use their packing cubes i love base like i do not think it's overhyped or just like an influencer brand or celebrity brand like it is so amazing this is the bag i took to europe and i do also this same routine for when i'm packing a carry-on i just decided to do a checked bag because one, I'm flying Southwest, so it's free. And I have a bunch of little stuff that I need to bring, like my mom's birthday gifts, some samples for Dream Daily that I'm taking pictures of, and things that wouldn't make me be able to pack in a carry-on. But I probably could have if I wasn't bringing this extra stuff. Okay, anyway, let's get started with my packing routine. So the first thing I do is I make a packing list on my phone. Also, don't mind my nails. I'm getting them done today. Don't worry. But I make a packing list in the notes app of my phone and I kind of just use the same layout and can repurpose it for every trip. So like when I go to New York, I'll just fill in these little headlines for my New York list. So I start with outfits and writing down like, okay, what kind of outfits am I going to need on this trip? Like for this beach trip, I need my travel outfit, some casual daytime outfits, a nice dinner and an Easter Sunday outfit. And then I do um, check boxes of like, okay, all the items I need for my casual looks, for nice shoes, accessories, etc., toiletries, tech, and any other. So the tech is especially like something I can repurpose every time. Like I'm always going to bring these tech items. So if you don't make a packing list, I highly recommend doing it. It helps so much so you don't forget anything and also so you feel like prepared with your outfits and you know what outfits you're going to do. If you want to take it a step further, I know people that take photos in the outfits that they're packing and put them into the app, like into your note here, you insert an image so that you can see exactly what outfit you're packing and like how you wear it. Then this is the base checked bag that I believe the 26 inch. I love how it has these two pockets here. This first is going to help me. <laughs> um, and then it has this side where I put like shoes and toiletries. And then it has this, excuse me, it has this compressor here that has a pocket, a mesh pocket. And then this is where I put clothes and also I use their packing cubes. So I have one pack of their packing cubes and I kind of split it up between um, my carry on and my checked bag. So I do have more, but we'll see if what I can do. I fit in two bags. So the next thing I'm going to do is bring out all my clothes, just like those clothes I need to pack and put them into the packing cubes and into the side of the suitcase. Spruce is under there. 
if you see this moving, don't be scared. He just wants to hide out, which makes me sad that I can't, can't bring him on this trip. I also usually will always roll my items. So that's usually how I like to pack is the rolling methods. We're gonna do casual in this packing cube. dresses and probably my PJs in here. Both of these gorgeous dresses I'm bringing were from Newly this month. Like how gorgeous. It's like this is the prettiest fabric. It's like a mermaid's tail. It's gorgeous. I do have a little bit more room. I'm not going to take out another packing cube, but I'll put them here. But with jeans or thicker items, with jeans or jackets, I like to put them underneath and I don't roll them, I fold them. So like this denim skirt, which is from Newly, would be really thick, folded up. I rolled up, but folded, it fits pretty well. Same thing with these denim shorts. I'm just gonna lay them flat underneath here. And then this sweater, which is a little bit puffier, and my orange dress, I'm gonna tuck. If needed, I could also probably lay something on top of here if I come across it. All right, now we're gonna move on to this side, which is shoes and toiletries. I already have some toiletries and shoes at the house because um, we visited back in February and we were able to leave stuff there. So I thankfully am not gonna take up as much room with that. And then I also have some samples, which I'm gonna have to hide from you guys. These are my two toiletry bags. Um, this is the one I've had since freshman year of college. It's like the first edition of the base makeup bag. It holds everything. It holds makeup, skincare, jewelry. It has so much, it has a brush holder. Like it has everything I need and it really doesn't take up too much space. I've, like I said, been using that for I guess like six years now. Um, and then I recently last summer got this cute little black bow um, bag, which I just feel like is so summery and beachy and I just have to bring it. So I think what I'm gonna put in here is like, just other little necessities like a Tide pen, tampons, some fragrances. I really don't need to like bring this cute bag, but I just wanna bring it. So we're gonna include that. Like I said, since I have flip flops and cute heels at the beach house, I am just gonna be bringing sneakers. So I'm gonna bring these as like a casual pair and I'm gonna wear my Hoka's there um, in the airport. Something else I do if I'm bringing my Dyson is I will tuck the Dyson attachments into the shoes. I think I am going to bring it. So I'll grab that in a second. I'm going to fill the rest of this with my samples and mom's gifts. So that'll be pretty much full. And then I love these pockets here for little things. Like I fill this one usually with underwear. I also have a dirty laundry bag that comes with base that I need to put in here. And then this side, since it's like waterproof, is if I have any bigger toiletry items that don't fit in those little bags, I can stow them away here. And then my other little tip is getting a tech case. So I got this before Europe and I got it in a bright color so that I could find it easily in my bags. And if you have cameras or things like that, it's so helpful. I keep my chargers. I'll link this stuff from Amazon below. Um, I keep like extra batteries, my light, SD cards, things like that. And so I'll also I just tuck this into here somewhere. And then what I do with my cameras, I'm gonna bring the camera that you guys are on right now. So I can't pack that yet, but I have my G7X as well. And to keep these safe, I'll either put them in my like backpack that I bring on the plane, or what I do is I put, squish them like in between places, or I'll even put them in the packing cubes um, to keep them safe between all of the clothes. I actually brought my Adidas's, jewelry is in there, underwear, PJs, and socks are good to go. Tech, I do need to pack up tech, but I have to actually stop using my tech to do that. I don't always bring this compressor 
but they say it's good too. What do I have in here? Uh, this just clips on right here. There's also a tiny pocket there as well. All right, and then I just flip it over, zip it up. I also like the suitcase. It has a little weigh indicator, so it'll tell you if your checked bag's overweight, which is super helpful. And yeah, that's gonna be it for this little pack with me. I hope this section was helpful if you're going on any spring trips. Um, and yeah, let's get back to the reset. I love sharing a little bit of like cleaning and resetting in that way in these videos. And I just did a big spring clean with me. So the whole video is like cleaning and organizing, doing a closet clean out, all that stuff. So I'll even put some footage from that. But if you want to see the full video, you can check that out on my channel. It was like one of my most recent videos. Congratulations. You have made it to the content corner of my monthly reset. I absolutely love sharing with you guys what I've watched, what I've read, what I've listened to, because it's so fun. March for movies, I watched a lot of old movies, so I don't think I have anything new to share. I watched like Cheaper by the Dozen on our beach trip. I watched Something's Gotta Give, It's Complicated, those Nancy Myers movies that they put on Netflix. I watched 27 Dresses, just like some good classics if you can tell my movie taste. And I really thought I had watched something new to share and I just cannot remember. But I did watch a good amount of TV. So first off, finished Love is Blind. I think it was season six, the newest season. Watched it all the way through. Watched it with Ashley, my roommate, and our boyfriends, and we all loved it. I think overall I would rate it a 3.5 because although it was super entertaining, it was really good TV. It wasn't like, oh my gosh, I'm obsessed with this show. I'm gonna watch every single season. I was interested in this season because it was getting hype on social media. People said it was good. I was like, okay, I'll watch. Reality TV is not my favorite TV to watch. I enjoy like storytelling, fictional stories more than reality TV, but it was a fun thing to watch with people. I don't know if I would have watched it all by myself, but I enjoyed it. I thought the reunion was kind of crazy. They really like dug deep, which I enjoyed, but also, like you could tell the hosts have an agenda and it was just interesting. Like I just, it, it felt refreshing because it wasn't anything like a bachelor reunion, which I'm gonna get into next. I did watch Bachelor all the way through the new season. I talked about it a little bit last reset, how I really do love Joey. I think everyone's kind of on this page where it's like he is a real guy. He seemed very down to earth. He took the process very seriously, like even now who he's engaged to, I won't say any spoilers, but he's like, this is my forever. Like, it seems like he's really legit and he just seems very real. So I think we all loved him. He's definitely my favorite bachelor by far. I enjoyed watching him and his journey the whole season, which normally doesn't isn't the case for me. Usually by the end, I'm like over it. So overall, I give The Bachelor a four. I would say a four. Like I said, they kind of have their cut and dry scenes. Like, you know what they're gonna say, you know what's gonna happen. But I honestly think I liked a lot of the girls and I liked Joey and so that gave it a higher rating than I would normally give The Bachelor. Now let's get into books because I have four books and they are really good, most of them. Okay, so first off, my review, it's taken forever. This book came out end of January. I finally finished it beginning of March. House of Flame and Shadow. This is Crescent City book three. Um, Sarah J. Mass, she wrote Akatar, she wrote Throne of Glass. If you're in the fantasy reading world, you know about her. And look how thick this book is, guys. I had, I wanted the physical copy. My boyfriend got it for me for Valentine's Day because I was like, this book is what, it's almost a thousand pages. It's like 800 and something pages. I was like, I cannot read this on Kindle. I feel like I'm getting nowhere. I need the physical book to be able to like piece through and see how far I am in this. There's a lot of mixed reviews on this book. Some people loved it, some people hated it. I feel like a lot of people, it disappointed them. So let me give my rating. I actually give it a pretty high rating from what I've seen. I'm giving it four stars. Um, and I'm gonna explain why. I'm gonna say spoilers for this book because I feel like I can't talk about something this deep in the series without spoilers. So if you haven't read any of the Crescent Cities or Sarah J Mass, just skip ahead um, a few minutes. Okay. Here's the thing, don't get me wrong, I love Akatar, I love Sarah J Mass, but I am not so deep in the world that I'm like looking up theories on TikTok. Like if I come across one, I'm like, oh, that's so cool, that's a great theory, but I am not like into a lot of theories. And I think a lot of people, they were disappointed in this book because they had such high expectations and they had so many ideas of what they wanted the author to do in the book and she didn't do that. And I understand like that's disappointing if you want a storyline to happen and it doesn't happen that way. However, for me, I came in with no expectations and so I really enjoyed it. I do think it was hard to read. It was hard to get 
it was hard to understand at the beginning because she flips perspectives of characters, locations, and even worlds within the same chapter. So a lot of books, like when you start a chapter, you know whose perspective it is. This is not like that. I You jump through like three different people's perspectives. They're in different parts of the world. They're in different universes, all within a few sentences. And so it was really hard to understand what was going on at the beginning because I was so confused who we were jumping around to. About like a quarter of the way in, I feel like I got the hang of it. I knew what to expect and that like we were constantly changing it up. I do think there were some slow moments that didn't need to be slow. We're in the third book. It's not like we need a ton of world building, but there was that. Um, Lydia, favorite character to come out of Crescent City. I don't love a ton of the characters of Crescent City, but I really love Lydia. I used to love Ethan in like the second book. I really loved Ethan and I was excited we were going to get more of his perspective. But by the end of this book, I really was kind of not happy with Ethan and his storyline. I feel like it was kind of all over the place. Um, but I loved Lydia. It did make me cry two times, like kind of in the middle. And then at the, was it at the end? Yes. I was obsessed with the crossover. If you know, big spoiler here, but, um, Akitar crosses over into Crescent City and I think it needed more. Like I was expecting Bryce to be in the Akitar world in Perthian for most of the book and she wasn't. So I was a little disappointed by that. Um, but Honestly, the ending with Nesta and Bryce's parents and Cassian, like, I feel like that re redeemed it a bit, but I wanted to see more of, like, Ryzan and Feyre in this book, and you get a touch of Ryzan. It made me so happy because he's, like, my favorite Sarah J. Mass male, but it's just, like, not enough. Um, I think if there was more crossover, I would have given this book a five. Crescent City is my least favorite Sarah J. Mass series. Um, I would never read this book again because it was a lot to get through, but I'm happy I read it. And overall, at the end, I was very happy with it, with some other like Throne of Glass things they sprinkled in. I had to look into it more on TikTok because I wasn't 100% sure, but I liked the majority of the book. I'll say it that way. So pleasantly surprised with this. It wasn't like this is the best book ever. This is exactly what we were needing in this series, but I was happy with it. I feel like that was just so much to explain and get off my chest. I've been holding on to that review all month. Let's go into something a little bit lighter, a contemporary romance. I read Mr. Fixer Upper by Lucy Score. Um, I do like a lot of her romances, but overall I give this book a three. It had a really strong start. So the, it takes place on an, like an HGTV type of set, basically like one of the production assistants slash producers. She is the main female character. And then the main male character is like one of the builders on the show, like one of the stars that like he works in, in construction on the houses that they show on the television show. It had a really strong start, even some emotional storylines that ha don't have to do with the main uh, two characters. They talk about like who they're renovating these houses for. There's like sob stories there, which really touched me. And it's a guy falls first trope. My thing with Lucy score romance is I just think they are a tad too long, like just 150 pages too long. I think this book is around 400 pages, but it is just it's just a little too long. So if I'm someone where if when I'm writing contemporary romance, I want it to be short, sweet, to the point, just enough, make me wanting more instead of making it feel dragged on. If you are wanting something different for a contemporary romance, this one definitely is with the set. I really enjoyed that. Oh, and it takes place over the course of a year. It like breaks it up into seasons, like fall, winter, spring, summer. So that was kind of nice. I like when books do that um, as well. So Okay, the next book I read um, in like two days because I read this on my beach book retreat because I wanted something to match the beach vibe. I read Vengeance of the Pirate Queen. This is book three in a series. The first two books are Daughter of a Pirate Queen and Daughter of a Siren Queen. I rated the first book four stars last summer and then I rated the second book, Daughter of a Siren Queen, five stars, okay? It's like one of my favorite YA romanticy, which is romance and fantasy, books. I absolutely loved it. And the series is just super fun and lighthearted. It, there's no fae. It's mainly like sirens, mermaids, and pirates. This third book, Vengeance of a Pirate Queen, also had some like magic geese type stuff, like a gem that brought the dead back to life. Like very Pirates of the Caribbean S. Actually, she starts the book off with a Jack Sparrow quote. So I just knew going into it, I was going to like it because I love the Pirates movies. It's an entertaining, quick read. It's super action packed. If you love a sweet, good romance, but you don't want a ton of spice or smut, these are great books for you. There's like none of that. And so, but it's still a good book. And I really love like the main female characters and just how action packed they are. They're such a good book. If you're looking for a good like pirate vibe, beach vibe, such a good summer read. Okay. And then my five star read of the month is Powerless, 
by Lauren Roberts. This is another YA romance fantasy book, which I don't know why I normally don't gravitate towards YA, but both of these books were recommended to me at Powerless. My friends read and loved it. And I was like, wait, okay, I'm so excited to read. It caught my attention. This book, if I had to describe it three ways, it's Hunger Games, Aladdin, Princess Diaries 2, which are like three of my favorite movies. So <laughs> I loved this book. It's like Aladdin because at the beginning, I'm not going to spoil anything, but the premise at the beginning, the um, main female character is kind of the Aladdin. She's very poor. She's orphaned. She has to steal for food. She steals from the one of the king's sons, the prince. And then it kind of puts her into this trial, which is like the Hunger Games. The romance in this book is really great without being spicy, but the romance in this book is so good. And they're, oh, I just, I was obsessed with it. It's a brother's trope. So love triangle with the two brothers. And like I said, there's a lot of romance scenes that remind me of Princess Diaries too. I haven't heard anyone else say that, but definitely reminded me of that, which I loved. And there was a twist at the end that I was not expecting. So overall, I thoroughly enjoyed this book. I listened to it partially on audiobook and then partially mainly read it, but a few chapters I listened to audiobook version of it and it was a fabulous experience. Like, oh, I'm so excited. There is a prequel of this book coming out in April, actually at the end of April. And then the second book, which I need now because there's a cliffhanger at the end, I need to the second book um, comes out later this summer. So it's a perfect time to read Powerless. There also is some magic in there. So like certain characters have, most of the characters have a certain power. She does not, AKA she's powerless. And that, that is that. All right, so that wraps up my April 2024 reset. How exciting. Um, let me know if you guys enjoyed this video. Be on the lookout for my April budget with me. It'll be coming very soon. If you're watching this before Easter and you celebrate, I hope you have a great Easter. Um, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.